Hey, Projectors for Sewing Group. Sorry about that. My stream didn't go as planned. Um, my laptop's not quite powerful enough to be streaming across three platforms and then projecting at the same time. I've never had Adobe freeze on me like that. So, um, word to the wise, don't buy a laptop that does not have upgradable RAM. Right, Steve? My husband. Um, so, I think for Tuesday and any subsequent uh, streams I'm going to do, I'm going to do it from his desktop computer, which is a gaming computer. It should be able to handle everything. And I won't be projecting, I'll just be an Inkscape, which is a CPU hog, but um, I think it'll be able to manage it okay. Um, so for this video, I'm just gonna do it without streaming. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. A lot of the stuff has been covered by Sasha and our many other um, admins and helpful people in the group, but uh, just in case you needed a visual guide, um, I am going to go to, let's see here, turn off my webcam, and so you can see my desktop here. Um, so I have three different sewing patterns here, uh, and they're all a little bit different in the way that they uh, look when you're projecting it. So first of all, I've got um, my my uh, apostrophe patterns, my fit leggings. So you are able to select any kind of um, um, output file you want. So I chose uh, the projector file with inverted colors. I prefer the inverted colors when I'm uh, when I'm tracing out or cutting out on my uh, fabric, just because I tend to buy darker fabric. So it is easier to see the white lines for me. Okay, uh, so here's another file. We've got the PT Stitchery uh, Yoggers, the kids' Yoggers. And this is a projector file and it has uh, layers, which is great. I still prefer like a solid color line and I still don't think a lot of these uh, lines are thick enough for my liking. Um, so what I would do if I was projecting this out to cut is I would probably invert the colors. So you go edit, preferences, replace document colors, and I press enter. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't change the colors of the lines in this, uh, but for me, it just makes it easier to see when I'm projecting. Okay. Uh, we're inverting the colors like that won't work is if you've already modified a file in Inkscape, uh, which is what I do for a lot of my files, especially if I'm using them on custom fabric because I'm very uh, economical with how I use my uh, custom fabric. So I will have to go back to the regular colors and I'll open up this pattern. So this is already at full size for projecting, which for me is 30.7. So you can see the lines are pretty thick. Um, uh, I have unfolded the waistband. And if I zoom out, you can kind of get an idea. So I've actually uh, duplicated and mirrored uh, the legs. So there's no question for me. I just find it, uh, I, I don't mix up the pattern pieces as much when I'm doing this. So this is something I'm going to be covering in my Inkscape class. Uh, so I hope you can all join me and I hope that goes smoother than tonight's live stream. Alrighty. So I'm going to turn on my projector. I'm going to go back to my webcam here. Make sure I have the right zoom percentage for all of these. Okay. So webcam back on. Okay. So... I'm in a basement. I have limited height. Um, my projector is in my ceiling. Uh, a lot of people would mount it with one of the uh, mounting things you can get from Amazon. I did not purchase one. And uh, so my husband actually like just put wood around it in a box and he's kind of shimmed it up. I'm surprised it hasn't moved, but I've been lucky and I've had it up here uh, since May, I think, without having changed it. I'm only on my second calibration. Uh, I'd like to keep it that way. Anyways, um, so I've got about, I want to say like 55-ish inches uh, to my cutting surface. 
This is an Ape Man, Ape Man 550. So let's go back to my project, my cutting surface here. It's a little bit laggy to turn on. Okay, so it's um, it's just extending my desktop because this is my desktop on my laptop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my Adobe Reader window over here. Now, if you are changing which laptop you're using, what source you're using, I believe your zoom will change based on your resolution. I've only ever projected from this laptop, so I, I don't know how that works, but I would double check that. Okay, so I've got it open, but I don't have it full screen and my projector kind of cuts off like that top menu area. So I often don't go full screen and what I'll do instead, sorry, I don't, uh, I don't um, maximize the window is what I'm trying to say, but I will enter full screen mode. So uh, there's a button here uh, that looks like a monitor. So if you click that, it'll go full screen. It'll remove any of the menus that are taking up valuable cutting space. And as you can see here, so this is leggings for me and I'm not, yeah, like I'm like anywhere between a size six and a size 10. Um, so I can fit both uh, the front and back of the legging on my cutting surface. And my cutting mat is 24 by 36. So it's not a huge, huge one, but it's a decent sized one. Um, so yeah, I can fit them both on here at once. Um, when I am going to cut, and I actually did cut something in my first video, uh, which I am trashing because uh, it's a quite laggy. Um, so when I am projecting, I probably, I probably wouldn't align both pieces on. I, I would focus on one, and this is kind of too far for me to reach already. Like, I would probably move it over here. I'd want to make sure that I'm not close to the edge because I do not want to cut into my surface because it also dulls your blade if you're not cutting on uh, on your self-healing mat. Um, and what I also like to do is I like to align my grid with the grain line. Um, I may, alternatively to that, or in addition to that, I should say, I might align... So like that's like right on the edge of that line. So I might use that as a guide for lining up my fabric to make sure that I don't move it off balance here. So if I was lining it up like this, I know that my fabric is kind of going to here. And so I would line it up, up to here. If you've got a straight line, that is uh, for the rest of it. And I find it so much easier to line up the grain line on a projector. I found I was always folding over my pattern piece to make sure it lined up with the grain line. And you don't do that here. Ideally, you have a grain line that's very long like this. And I think uh, this pattern had um, some good people suggesting how a projector file should look. So anyways, yeah, I would line this up with this. I would kind of squeak it out of the smallest amount of fabric I can. So line it up nicely so it's most efficient. I have uh, sample sizes of, um, what's it called? My tabletop, my countertop for my kitchen that I use for my fabric. downs. <laughs> I might switch to magnets at some point, um, but this has worked okay. My only challenge is I don't have enough, so I often have to move them all over, and then when I'm doing, done cutting this area, I then move them over here and, you know, make sure that this fabric is still lined up properly. Alrighty, so that's uh, what I do there. We've got the markers here, so I find it way easier to mark things like this without having a a pattern piece over top because I always found it hard to like how are you actually supposed to see where you're supposed to put the mark so I'm more inclined to do it when I'm projecting than I was when I was cutting out paper patterns uh, and then we often get the question of what are you what do you do if your projection is 
larger larger than you can see or if the pattern piece is larger than your projection. So there's uh, what you'd call like a landmark, something to tell you how to line it up nicely. So this pattern piece uh, tends to have or has not some notches in it. So I really use whatever is available. And it doesn't have to be right at the edge of the of your projection either. I might just cut up to here or mark it on here. And then I would move both the fabric and my pattern over. Make sure it's lined up again. And then can continue cutting from there. And I might just do that because I know I don't have much more to go. Um, I, as you can see, I can fit leggings for myself on here. Uh, I think I had trouble width wise with sleeves for a coat earlier this year. And my husband's like joggers and jeans would be just too slightly too large for the projection as well. Um, but I've never had an issue just sliding over the fabric, marking out where where to line it up again and sliding over both the projection uh, and the and the fabric. So that's what I do when I'm projecting. If I was finished these two sides, I would use the flip button on my projector remote to do the mirrored side. And that's because I prefer cutting with my fabric right side up all the time, um, just in terms of lining up the grain line. Sometimes it's lining up um, a pattern on it. Uh, so this makes it easy to do that. And like I mentioned earlier, if I was uh, modifying something in Inkscape, I would duplicate and mirror image. So flip, but in the Inkscape file, anything that needed two copies mirrored. Or, uh, two cuts, uh, two pattern pieces mirrored, uh, just so that I wouldn't get confused later because I've definitely cut out like three back legs instead of two back and two front. So just makes it easier on yourself. Um, but yeah, the flipping helps as well. It also kind of gives you like, okay, you've done all the ones that are this pointing in this direction, then you can go back and do all the ones that are mirrored if you want. Okay. I'm just going back to my main projection here so that I don't get confused the next time I turn it on. Uh, so that is cutting out pattern pieces in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't do this with uh, streaming properly with questions, but I would be happy to answer any questions that you have on this. Um, either in the group, I will post this video shortly. Um, alternatively, um, I still hope, hope and plan to go forward with my Inkscape tutorial on Tuesday, albeit with better computer technology. Um, so if there's any questions on this video, I can also answer them in person there if you need to visually see it on here. Although I won't be by my cutting table, but I can hopefully talk you through it. But yeah, any questions, let me know. Um, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you on Tuesday for my Inkscape class one. Have a good night, everyone.